The African American Legend series highlights the accomplishments of blacks in areas as varied as politics, sports, aviation, business, literature, music, and religion. We will explore how African Americans have succeeded in areas where they had been previously excluded because of segregation, racism, and lack of opportunity. I'm your host, Dr. Roscoe C. Brown, Jr., and with us today is Voza Rivers, founding member and executive producer of the New Heritage Repertory Group. Glad to have you with us today, Voza. Glad to be here, Dr. Brown. Well, we know each other a long time. A long time. And we, I know the New Heritage Repertory Theater. So yes. tell us about how the theater got started and how you became involved and where you are now. New Heritage Theater was founded by Roger Furman in 1964. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a student at the Harlem YWCA on 125th Street next to the post office. Mm -hmm. Roger Furman was a guest speaker that evening. And I was a sp public speaking class because I had a, a very, I was a very shy young man, and I wanted to uh, come out of that. So I, I decided to take a public speaking class. Roger, being the guest, uh, he just ignited the class with stories of the American Negro Theater that he had joined when he was in his uh, uh, young uh, uh, teenage, not young teenage years, but his latter teenage years. And he talked about the uh, the uh, County Cullen Library that the American Negro Theater was housed in the basement and that Ozzie Davis, Ruby D, Sidney Poitier, Harry Belafonte, Rosetta Lenoir, and uh, Fred O'Neill and Abe Hill and uh, Gertrude Jeanette were all members. And these were names that resonated very well with me because I knew of their celebrity status as, as, as black actors in film and theater. And he said he was going to start a theater company based on that model. And uh, he volunteered me to become a member of that uh, company. And that started the long trek of my involvement with theater. I had no knowledge or any involvement with theater until I met Roger that evening. Well, I knew Roger many years ago yes. as well. I worked with the New Heritage Repertory Theater. I was also working with the Negro Ensemble Company with Doug Ward. Yes. And it's interesting to see these theater groups grow. And, grow uh, and some of them were still surviving. And some of them are still surviving. Yeah. And now people like you have taken over. Now tell us about how the new Heritage Repertory Theater Group operates. Well, 10 years ago, well, first of all, Roger Furman, uh, he, uh, 1964, Roger transitioned on in 1983. Mm -hmm. In 1983, I, uh, I was uh, elevated to head up the theater company. And then, uh, Immediately, what I wanted to do was to improve on Roger's legacy, mm -hmm. and we renamed the theater Roger Furman's New Heritage Theater mm -hmm. because I didn't want people to forget who Roger was. Right. And then for the next several years, I look, reached to South Africa to bring in works from South Africa mm -hmm. written by blacks. It was during the height of apartheid. Mm -hmm. And so I was very fortunate to meet a young man named Duma, uh, who came to our theater. He came to, he used to be Steve Biko's writing partner. Mm -hmm. And after Steve Biko was murdered in South Africa, Duma came to the United States and wound up on our doors and opened up our, you know, my, my mind and all of the actors and others to what was happening in South Africa. So we started bringing in work from South Africa in our little 99-seat theater on 125th Street and uh, Lenox Avenue, yeah, upstairs. So from that, I guess around 1996, I started getting a little weary because I had been bringing in young people to work with me. And... In each instance, I would get a young executive assistant, artistic assistant, and then we would train them, and they would move on. So I reached out to a very close buddy of mine, Jamal Joseph, and I told Jamal the story. And Jamal's uh, 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 response to me is, you've, you, you've inherited an institution, and it's important for our institutions to come on. Let's really look at what we really want to do. And we decided to then reshape the theater into three basic divisions. We changed the name of the theater again to New Heritage Theater Group because we wanted to encompass other divisions. The first division was Impact Repertory Theater because we wanted to mm -hmm. give back and work with our youth. So we created a youth vision. The second division was 
New Heritage Films because we wanted to document our institutions, our living icons who are among us, and we, we did that. So today, 10 years later, we have a youth division where over 500 young people have gone through that program where we use the arts to make them better citizens. Uh, New Heritage Films, we do documentaries. We have documented the 110th anniversary of the Greater Harlem Chamber, the 250th anniversary of Harlem Dowling Association, mm -hmm. the 95th anniversary of the National Urban League, uh, the Harlem School of the Arts, and it goes menacing town, menacing townhouse. So we've become the go-to guys to do documentaries on historical institutions, and we love doing that work. Now, to what extent do you cooperate with other groups like the Harlem School of the Arts, the Apollo uh, Theater Company, and so on? How do you relate to those groups in the Harlem community? Well, there are two ways. Number one, New Heritage Theater Group, which now we're the oldest black not-for-profit theater in New York City. Uh, mm -hmm. We're in our 44th year. We don't have a physical home for performances, but we mm -hmm. claim many homes. So mm -hmm. we're at the Schomburg, we're at uh, we're at the Apollo Theater, we're at the Museum of the City of New York, American Museum of Natural History, El Museo del Barrio, mm -hmm. uh, the Riverside, the Theater at Riverside Church. We use all of their venues, and we provide. Uh, ongoing special programs for them. And that's one way. Another way is that we've created a service organization called the Harlem Arts Alliance. And the Harlem Arts Alliance has 400 members. Included in that membership are the visual and performing artists, not-for-profit and for-profit institutions, churches, uh, 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 tavern owners, uh, directors, choreographers, technicians, designers. And we meet the first Monday of every month at the theater at Riverside Church. 400 members and 250 people coming to a monthly meeting the first Monday of every month at the theater at Riverside Church. An unbelievable networking opportunity where we all stay connected to what we're doing. And, and that's why uh, I know that Harlem Opera uh, Theater was one of your guests very, very active, very uh, important uh, organization in our community, Harlem School of the Arts. Uh, when they, uh, they change their new leadership, we open up our arms, we welcome in the new executive director. Negro Ensemble Company mm -hmm. has now found a home mm -hmm. uh, in Harlem at the Harlem School of the Arts. Uh, Garland Thompson and the Frank Silvera's Writers Workshop, mm -hmm. another 35-year-old yeah. organization. They have mm -hmm. now found a home at the Harlem mm -hmm. School of the Arts. We are networking and talking to each other like we've never done before. And for that, I'm very proud, very pleased, and very happy. Now, if someone who's watching the show decides they want to join the Harlem Arts Alliance, what do they have to do to join it? It's an easy one. Uh, first of all, our website is www.harlemaa.org and there is an application that they can uh, draw down. What's so nice about that, and the, the phone number is 212-410-0030 extension 212. Harlem Arts Alliance yearly membership, if you're an individual artist, is $15. If you are an organization, a theater, dance company, is $25 a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will be surprised how extensive the membership from Carnegie Hall to Lincoln Center, uh, the public theater, to the Uptown group. So you'll see the Schomburg there as well as Frank Severa's Writers Workshop, as well as the National Black mm -hmm. Theater, or Woody King's New Federal Theater, or the various dance company, Robin Williams Uptown Dance Company, uh, 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 the Perry Studios. All of us are there, and it's just an amazing organization to be a part of. Um. If someone does join the Harlem Arts Alliance, what do you expect from them? What do they have to do? Or is it just sharing, coming to that meeting, what do you say, the first Monday of every month at yes, Riverside Church Theater? Yes, that meeting is a production in and of itself. Mm -hmm. For example, if you are a visual artist, we have a core group that each month, each month they on the stage present their artwork. 
This is at the Riverside Theater. At the Riverside Church Theater. Theater. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you, so if you are a member, you can uh, coordinate with our uh, with our uh, uh, director of uh, of visual arts presentations once a month. Your mm -hmm. artwork can be seen. If you are a filmmaker mm -hmm. and you have a trailer or a rough cut, you can screen your films at our meeting so we give each person will get five minutes mm -hmm. if you have a new program uh, uh, Dr. Jeffries for example was at our last meeting he has a video uh, that he shot called Nubia uh, uh, on one of his travel trips and he got an opportunity to come and present that information mm -hmm. if you have a new show that's opening up you can do a scene from your show when you come to a meeting for two hours between 10 and 12 noon it is truly a production. Now, so, when, when is the meeting now? It's the first Monday of every month at 10 o'clock at the Theater at Riverside Church, which is 91 Claremont Avenue. Mm -hmm. That's one block west of Broadway mm -hmm. between 120th and 122nd Street. And the membership and the meetings are open. You don't have to be a member to come to a meeting so that you can, you know, you can sample mm -hmm. before you join. What about writers and people who do poetry and hip hop? Are they involved they, as well? Oh yes, they are. So we have a lot of spoken word artists, and because we have Frank Savera's Writers Workshop, uh, that's what they do. We have the Frederick Douglass Creative Arts Center; mm -hmm. they're there, and we also have uh, the hip hop, uh, uh, the hip hop uh, organization where young people are encouraged to come. We mm -hmm. don't have as many young people as we would like, but clearly each of us, in our own way, we mm -hmm. reach out. I I know that people say, well, why have meetings at 10 o'clock in the morning? Well, a lot of our artists, they work different oh. kinds of hours, and we found out that that mm -hmm. would be the best. We've done evening meetings, but I will tell you, I do not want to, at 250 members coming to a monthly meeting, and then another 30 or 40 of them standing Mm -hmm. waiting for people to leave it's 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 a, it's a hot mm -hmm. ticket mm -hmm. as it is so we're bursting at the seams at our meetings mm -hmm. not right now it sounds like uh, you and the Arts Alliance are creating the New Holland Renaissance. We are part of it in our own small way. There's a lot of concentration on bricks and mortar. People talking about Columbia expansion, the 125th Street rezoning, and we definitely understand. We participate in those discussions. We're on the task force. Mm -hmm. But what we say is that the same way you want to landmark uh, bricks and mortar, you have to landmark mm -hmm. our culture Ideas. and landmark our indigenous culture. Mm -hmm. So we're at the forefront of keeping that conversation mm -hmm. alive. Uh, we formed a group called the Coalition of Theaters of Color, another opportunity to bring our uh, arts groups, Latin and black theater groups together with more than 30 years in existence. And we're talking to our elected officials and funders that it's really mm -hmm. important that they hear our message. If they don't support us or see the need like our community sees it, we're going to go the way of the dinosaur. And we believe that it's important that indigenous culture be a part and parcel of the conversations and the planning that will that will, re -cha will, that will uh, change the face of the community that we live we live in. Well, I'm not so much concerned about changing the face of the community. I don't think it's going to change because we have the heritage of African American culture, music, literature, poetry, etc., which is engrossed in the overall Harlem Renaissance experience. It, it, it's, as you say, it's not bricks and mortar. It's an idea. Yes. And I can just see this uh, umbrella of ideas of art and music and dance and opera and so on emerging from the Harlem community. I don't think it's going to take it away from it. And even though people talk about changes in Harlem, I don't think that there may be some residential changes, but I don't think there'll be significant cultural changes. What's your opinion about that? Well, I think that the <laughs> challenge is that a number of our, uh, our contemporary artists, uh, they be writers or, 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 or performers or visual artists, are finding it difficult to stay in the community. And because of the residential, mm -hmm. uh, 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 the, the cost of living in the community now has uh, 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 mm -hmm. become more challenging for them. So mm -hmm. I'm really concerned. So our dialogue is, is that ch uh, change is inevitable, meaning on the bricks and mortar side. However, what we're asking is that 
we, uh, we, we create a plan that incorporates some of what the indigenous artists have been doing into mm -hmm. the new into the new plans and through uh, Inez Dickens it has been um, uh, she's been definitely articulating that to the City Planning Commission the community boards have heard our voices and we've been attending those mm -hmm. meetings and so this is another addition to whatever change we have to landmark our indigenous businesses and culture into, into the landscape. Well, actually, you're talking about physical space as yes. well as ideas. Yes, that's and right. What you're suggesting is that in order for these ideas to Flourish. emerge, yes. you need people there yes. and they need a place to work. Even if they don't live in Holland, they have a place to come and congregate and to you produce and develop, et cetera. Now, that's a significant challenge. Uh, what kind of response have you gotten from, let's say, the Planning Commission and from some of those who are doing the larger planning for Harlem? Well, uh, the Planning Commission has listened and they have incorporated some of these ideas. I think the most important uh, 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 benefit is that we are at the table. And usually, you're not at the table. You are, 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 are directed that these are the things that are happening and you have nothing to say or can do about it. And having an opportunity to be at the table and to make significant recommendations that have been acted on or incorporated in the thinking is something that I, I'm finding out is just, is just value added. We are at the table and we have seen changes. There were no provisions initially for the kinds of things that I, that I, that I just articulated in terms of some of the indigenous groups having a place freeze rents for us. I mean, it, 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 it uh, uh, we're, we're, we're challenged to the maximum right now on maintaining the spaces that we have. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about a development that will happen three, four, maybe five years down the road. Hopefully we'll still be able to hold on. And I, when I say we, I'm talking a collective we. If in fact five years from now we're there, those rents that will be charged five years from now has to be subsidized. Any part mm -hmm. of the country, you look at art and culture and it's a subsidized art form. And mm -hmm. so we need to have that same kind of thinking uh, with our elected officials, with these uh, planning commissions, that what we do is very mm -hmm. important. We still are considered the cultural capital of black mm -hmm. America. And also, so goes Harlem, so goes the rest of black America mm -hmm. in terms of arts and culture. So we want to, we want to, we want to maintain our status. Well, African-American art, culture, music, whatever, is a driving force behind American culture. Yes. So in a sense, they can't let it go. So then the question is, where do we get the economic base to build on this culture? Um, as you know, the Harlem Renaissance was mainly f funded by white philanthropists. Yes. When they left, uh, we had enough of a residue to fight our way through it, particularly during the Depression. But now we have the artists being attracted by big contracts, leaving to go to Hollywood, to go to Nashville, Tennessee. What can we do to get more money into the Harlem artistic community. I think there has to be an assessment on 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 the new on the new opportunities for developers and others a an endowment fund to keep these institutions alive mm -hmm. the same way they create bids around the city uh, uh, businesses are assessed X amount of dollars and it's not a lot of dollars I mean it's mm -hmm. pennies but collectively it comes out to millions mm -hmm. I think that that's one idea that we need we need a cultural uh, endowment plan for indigenous artists throughout communities of color mm -hmm. all across the city. Have you put that in writing yet? I have articulated it. And, okay, uh, put so, it in writing. So, 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 but that, that's one idea. That's an excellent the, idea. The second idea is that uh, no donation is too small. We want our community to really adopt our institutions. Mm -hmm. Gertrude Jeanette, 93 years young. Mm -hmm. 
you know, came out of the American Negro Theater in 1940, still running a theater, still coming to a monthly Harlem Arts Alliance meeting, still working with young people, keeping that theater alive. I mean, we have still these living icons who have made uh, 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 our contributions, yourself included, the Honorable Percy Sutton, and others who, who continue to network and to share information. Shows like this becomes extremely important. Every neighbor can do their job by making a small contribution. And believe me, if this fund that I'm talking about is something that, uh, so I've talked about mm -hmm. the, 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 the cultural uh, endowment fund. Mm -hmm. I've talked about developers. I myself uh, am part of a group with Cliff Frazier, Mm -hmm. who heads up the uh, MLK yeah. Center in the Bronx, and Dr. Ademola Olubafola, mm -hmm. a visual artist. Mm -hmm. 17, 18 years ago, there was a dilapidated, abandoned warehouse, warehouse called the right. Dwyer Warehouse mm -hmm. on 123rd Street and St. Nicholas mm -hmm. Avenue. Through the, at that time, the agency that got control over that was HUDC, mm -hmm. Harlem Urban Development mm -hmm. Corporation. And there was this idea that they wanted to tear down the building, another developer. And we said we need housing for artists and we need a place to, to live and work. Mm -hmm. Well, it is now taking us 18 years. We still have that property, 90,000 square feet. We have now, uh, our first tenants in the residential started moving in two weeks ago. The lower level of the building is 7,500 square feet of space. In that space, we will have a small theater, an art gallery, rehearsal spaces, and incubator office spaces for local groups. We're taking our profits from the sale of the condo units upstairs to subsidize mm -hmm. the entire lower level. Mm -hmm. We believe that we must be the message that we bring. Mm -hmm. I am saying to developers that this is a model that they can look at. Now, mm -hmm. we are co-developing the property because we stayed with it for so long. That was not our original attention. However, we could not let this idea die. And now that we are uh, uh, in a position of looking at the developers being the, the, the movers and shakers in the city, all across the city, it's become about real estate, we're saying, look at our model. This is a way to keep the indigenous culture intact on, and provide spaces. Well, you're right. It keeps the indigenous culture there, but those condos will probably be bought by wealthy uh, non-African Americans. Well, so one of the questions is, how do we get some mixed well, income housing well, in there so that some of the middle income and working class African Americans can still live in Harlem? When we, when we started uh, our project 18 years ago, it was going to be all subsidized housing. Mm, I remember but that. as the various administrations changed, all that money dried up. The city was trying to get the building back from us to give to another developer. Mm -hmm. So the only way we could develop that project mm -hmm. was with uh, was with market rates, but market rates at a very low price. Mm -hmm. We never changed what we originally offered. But we also knew that whatever profits that would come in, and we're a not-for-profit organization, we would use that money to build out mm -hmm. a first-class space for the, for, mm -hmm. for the artist. There, there are affordable housing uh, uh, opportunities, there's subsidized housing and there's income targeted housing all coming up on the market now. When we were doing what we were doing mm -hmm. back then, there was, not, there was not a conversation about income targeted, mm -hmm. meaning that if the average, uh, the average uh, income for the residents of Harlem is twenty three, twenty four thousand dollars $24,000, I'm using that as a figure, then Know that 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 the that the buildings that are available, the apartments available, should not be more than thirty percent of that mm -hmm. of right. that mm -hmm. for their rent. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are things like that uh, that we're now looking mm -hmm. at, and we're a part of. And then with that, we're saying that the art should be a part of it. Of course, you're really articulating the challenge that faces the Harlem community, yes. the Harlem artistic community, the Harlem political community, the Harlem residential community, and not that. African Americans don't want non-African Americans That's to be right. in Harlem, but they want to keep the community with its culture and its business and eco economic background uh, 
related to the African American community. And that's a hard message to get across because some people say you, you want to keep other people out. Uh, as I understand, you don't want to keep other people out, but you also don't want to lose the residential density and the cultural density that's made Holland the place it is. I agree with you 100 percent. And uh, I think that many of the elected officials are understanding that. And the other thing is some of the uh, foundations are beginning to understand that. Yes. Because funding the arts, funding social services, funding housing for people of a wide uh, swath of economic background is good for the city and is good for the economy. Yes, it is. And, I, and again, I, I agree with you. So uh, for the artists, uh, we have always been on the periphery of those conversations, and mm -hmm. now we're bringing Great that to the, the, the forefront of our consciousness mm -hmm. and our articulation. So we are now, uh, we're now what I'm calling, we're creating artivists, mm -hmm. activists and artists, mm -hmm. you know, coming to the forefront, mm -hmm. being a part of the conversation. But before we close the show, I've got to give you the opportunity to talk about your Oscar Award-nominated impact group Yes. who were uh, in Hollywood uh, well, a Well, again, ago. I, am, I am so proud of our young people. We were invited to uh, audition for a movie over a year ago, and, um, and word had gotten out to the director mm -hmm. from London that, the, uh, that they should come to Harlem and see this group. We created an original song in a movie called August Rush. Mm -hmm. We were one of three films uh, where original songs were nominated for a 2008 Oscar. We performed at the Oscars uh, in front of a billion people in 200 countries, and we're all back together uh, uh, with our feet firmly on the ground, continuing to be ambassadors for the community that we live and work in. Today on African American Legends, we've been talking with Boza Rivers, who's the founder and creative director of the New Heritage Repertory Theater Group. Yes. And I'm glad that we've been able to talk about the role of arts and the Harlem Arts Alliance. And thank you again, Boza Rivers, for being with us today, African American Legends. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Brown.